And this was, you had to go into full anesthesia. Oh, wow. That's why it was so funny. There's no way you could drive home. Okay. 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 All right. We are ready, sir. Well, thank you, Kevin. I'm going to wait until the big clock on the wall says 2.30. <laughs> I think that clock is a little slow. Oh, oh the clock is slow. Oh, thank you, Kevin. In that case, good afternoon. I'm John Gregg, the mayor of the town of Seabrook Island. We're convening the town council this afternoon, December 13th, 2022, for the December town council meeting. And I invite all to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And can you confirm that notice of this meeting has been posted as is appropriate and that the other requirements of the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act have been satisfied? They have. Thank you for that. Uh, as I usually try to do, we'll uh, follow the agenda hopefully. And uh, the first item of business are minutes to be approved. We have the town council regular meeting minutes from the town council meeting of November 15th, 2022. May I have a motion for approval of those minutes? Second. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion concerning the minutes? of the town council meeting of November 15, 2022. Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the town council regular meeting minutes from the meeting of November 15, 2022, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Those minutes are approved unanimously. Next up, the town council work session meeting minutes from December 6, 2022. May I have a motion for approval of those minutes? Second. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion concerning the minutes from the work session meeting of December 6, 2022? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of those minutes as presented, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Those minutes are approved. Next up. Uh, there are no presentations. We have a public hearing item. And uh, what we have is Ordinance 2022-07, an ordinance to adopt a budget for the town of Seabrook Island, South Carolina, for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023, and ending December 31st, 2023. Joe, do you want to make any comments concerning the ordinance 2022-07 for the public hearing. Um, no, no change since last month at first All reading. Right, thank you. So we will entertain comments from anyone participating in the meeting. Catherine, are you getting any indication of someone wishing to make comments? Uh, no, sir. And we haven't received any public comments prior to the meeting through the website or um, in some of the comments that were submitted prior to the meeting. Well, I'll give it another minute and then we'll uh, close the public hearing. I think I'll give it a minute for a big clock on the wall. <laughs>
Public hearing for ordinance 2022-07 having been open and no indication of a desire to make comment having been received. There being no one in no one present wishing to make comments. So I now close the public hearing. Next up, I invite council to enter executive session. May I have a motion for council to enter executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. In that case, council will enter executive session and I will ask that Joe and Catherine please excuse themselves. Thank you.
motion. Make a motion that we come out of executive session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of any executive session, please signify your approval to return to regular session by saying aye. 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 Out of executive session. Uh, do we have a motion concerning a one-time year-end bonus? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I move that we implement the one-year, one-time year-end bonus for the town's employees, as we discussed in the committee. Executive session. I'm sorry. So we will have a one-time year-end bonus for employees of the town. Full-time employees will receive a bonus in the amount of $2,000. Part-time employees will receive a bonus in the amount of $1,000. The only question I have is whether or not the town will treat Judge O'Neill as a part-time employee for purposes of the bonus. Is that a question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, his rate, I believe, is set by contract. Isn't that right? It is. Um, so, I mean, if council chooses to do something, um, it's not included in the contract. But if you'd like to do something for the judge, you well, certainly can. The reason I have the question is because of the kerfuffle over his uh, pay from the town. And we had to treat it as if he were an employee as opposed to a contract provider of That's services. Right. If he is not an employee, then he will not be included as a part-time employee and receive a bonus of $1,000 for the tenure. Does he get a 1099 or a W-2? He will not get a W-2. As an employee. That's the easiest way to determine that. Look. I'm happy to allow you and Catherine to resolve whether or not the judge is an employee part-time and entitled to a $1,000 bonus. We have determined that including the eight full-time employees and the four part-time employees, including the judge, works out to $20,000. And I believe that's a bit more than the amount that you had indicated was the surplus that we had available. So I think you can find a way to make up the other $120,000 to pay a full amount if we're including this. Did you say 120,000? Hmm? What? Did you say 120? Yeah, the full 20. Wow. I thought I heard 120. <laughs> whoa, whoa. What did I miss? Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. No, um, I also need a second on the Miss Fink's motion, and then we also need a vote. Uh, I second her motion. It's been moved and seconded that the town pay employee one time year end bonuses uh, to its uh, full time and part time employees. Uh, any further discussion, questions, or comments concerning the motion? I was just thinking one thing, if you wanted to do the judge, um, <clears throat> his technically he's a salaried employee of the town, um, works typically one day a month at court. Um, one thing you may want to do to include the judge would be um, a bonus um, not to exceed the lesser of 2000 for a full-time employee, 1000 for a part-time employee, or a certain percentage of his salary of, what is it, 4200 4, I believe. So, I mean, if he did a 1000 or 2000 bonus, then that's 25 to 50% of his annual salary. So, if you just wanted to put a cap in there up to a certain percentage of salary you could address yes i view him as if he's an employee then i would consider him to be a part-time employee because he's clearly serving less than 37 what is it 37 and a half hours a week yes so he would be 
or by definition. And we can do that. That's how you want to handle it. it works for me. All right. Did we say our eyes? No. no. All in favor, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Very good. Approved. Next up, Susan's comments. Wait, uh, wait, wait. Do we have to fill in another thing for executive session? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, actually, we don't have another thing. Okay, you're taking care of it. I've attended to transmittal of an employment contract to our town administrator by email. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, citizens' comments. Uh, I inquire of the clerk uh, whether the comments were received prior to the meeting to be acknowledged at the meeting. Yes, sir. We received seven comments. We received one from Diane Thompson Kane. We received one from Bonnie Saba Sabia. We received one from Cindy Zop. We received one from Kara McIntosh. We received one from Bernie McLaughlin. We received one from Stephen Montague Pollock, and we received one from Robert Cherry. All of these comments um, can be viewed upon request. And uh, the comment from Ms. Kane, I believe uh, Councilman Corvalesi had replied to that comment. Is that the traffic one, Dan? Yes. <laughs> And so far as uh, citizens who are participating in the meeting today, uh, any citizen may speak pertaining to any item listed in the meeting agenda, which does not require a public hearing. Each speaker shall be limited to three minutes in which to make comments until no more than 30 minutes shall be allowed for all citizens recognized to make comments. Catherine, is there any indication of anyone desiring to make a comment. No, sir. I think, uh, I think I'll give it one more minute. I have a big crack on the wall. Catherine, have you received any indication of someone desiring to make a comment? No, sir. In that case, I will now close the citizen comment. This is the first citizen comment period, and we will move on to the reports of the town boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, first will be the advisory committee's reports, and I will call on Councilwoman Pat Fox to give a report for the Community Promotions and Engagement Committee. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this report is for the last month from 11-15 to 12-13, and it just as far as communications go, when, um, on November 20th, there was a radio net practice uh, session at 8 p.m., and there were eight participants in that, plus myself listening in. Um, we have two articles in the C broker this month. Uh, thank you very much, Councilman Korvaletsky, for your article, and also, the article from the um, Utility Commission, and I know having listened in on last week's meeting that Councilwoman Finke um, certainly praised Annie Smith Jones, Larry Buckelman, and Jim Furler for writing that article, and I have to praise them too because I think it went a long way to explaining um, the Utility Commission uh, what they do, what, <clears throat> what's available, um, 
um, et cetera. So I think that was a wonderful article. Um, as far as council goes, I can't remember what day it was, but I sent out probably on the 2nd or 3rd of December what your assignment would be for next year as far as um, writing the articles for the Seabrooker. If you didn't receive it, please let me know and I will send it to you again. Um, as far as the Community Promotions and Engagement Committee goes, um, on last Thursday, although I was out sick, I heard that we had a holiday extravaganza, but okay. And I certainly appreciate everyone who participated. That would be all the members of council staff, my members of the Community Promotion and Engagement Committee, and also all of the residents who came and attended the event. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to be canceling our December 15th meeting, uh, and that basically concludes that part of the report. Uh, this morning, I went to the um, Property Owners Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Uh, at that, there was a lot of discussion on the various uh, goals for 2023. I smiled as they discussed terms on um, how long um, people should be serving if you are not aware of it, but um, the Property Owners Association is a one-year term, and I think all of us who were on council two years ago or a year ago, we discussed um, having uh, longer terms, and they are approaching that too, is that one year is not really enough time. Um, so one year for so one year for the board. Yeah, it's one year. Yeah, I think we're talking about committees. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then the um, they a lot of talk about the renewed 50 project, which is what they're now labeling their project for revitalizing the lake house and also redoing um, the oyster catcher uh, area. So, uh, and then there were various other discussions. Certainly, the town was included in some discussions about the road and possibly tying into landfall way. It was nice to hear when I listened to the meeting from last week, I was unable to attend, um, the plans for the garage and annex will not in any way preclude a possible um, new construction of what's ever gonna happen on the end of life. Um, and so that, that meeting went fairly well, although it's an hour, almost two hours long. Um, and I think that concludes my report. Thank you, Pat. Any questions for Pat? Anyone? 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 All right. Next up, uh, report for the Environment and Wildlife Committee. I'll call on Councilwoman Finke to give that report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing new to report um, from the Environment and Wildlife Committee um, other than what um, we talked about at our meeting last week. I did want to just take a minute to thank Pat and her Community Promotions and Engagement Committee for the town holiday party last Tuesday and um, add my thanks to all the staff that worked so hard to pull it off. Um, it was an Oak Creek crowd. I wish there would have been three or four times as many people. It was such a beautiful evening. And uh, um, I don't know how we can advertise it any better than we <laughs> did. I, I feel like I read it in timelines every day for a week and in the Sapoa e blast, but there were so many people that said they hadn't heard about it and didn't know what was going on. So I, I don't know what else to do, but <laughs> um, um, folks missed a really nice evening. And, uh, that's why we're hiring someone yeah. for <laughs> communication, so maybe we can figure uh, that out. But thank you to you and your committee, and again, thank you to the staff, because I know it's a lot of work for them yes. taking up and down those tables. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I have nothing else to say. Thank you, Councilwoman Finke. Any questions for Jerry? All right, thank you. Uh, next up for the Public Safety Committee, I'm calling Councilman Court Vlesi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there is nothing uh, additional to what I reported last week. So with that, I'm done. All right, Dan, thank you. Any questions for Dan? None. And now to the Public Works Committee, I'll ask Councilman Goldstein to give that report. Thank you. I have nothing this week. 
Okay, so uh, anyone have any questions for Barry? I know that we have the plans out there now and, uh, for the annex and the garage. So uh, here's an opportunity if you would like to uh, inquire publicly concerning the plans, uh, feel free to do so. I was going to ask Barry if he has heard from anyone having listened to that whole and presentation. You haven't heard it from anyone? Just public works, then. Do you mind if I? Well, I will include it. You can put it out there. Okay, thank this you. Is the comment period, you have another week or so. All right, thank you. Next up, uh, we have special committees. Uh, no, ad hoc committees. Uh, is there a report this month from the short term rental ad hoc committee? No report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, board of Zoning Appeals, no report. Planning Commission, no report. State Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee, nothing. Utility Commission. Annie Smith Jones informed me this morning that she will not be here. There's, there was no meeting of the Utility Commission, and therefore there is no report. Uh, reports of the town officers, and I will give my report first. First item is an update concerning the town's request for public assistance for Hurricane Ian, the current status of the town's request for public assistance in consequence of Hurricane Ian remains pending, final. FEMA review, the program delivery manager for the town's request and confirmed on December 12th that there is currently no action required by the town in respect of the request. So we submitted our request. Uh, we have submitted our damage uh, information and uh, we're not required to augment what we have submitted at this point. Uh, next up, I would like to give my add my expression of thanks for the extraordinary effort for the town's holiday extravaganza. Volunteers and town staff were on hand the entire evening for the town's holiday extravaganza. My thanks to all who pitched in to bring about this year's greatly expanded event. We had uh, the food truck, the food tent, and we had uh, live music. And uh, I will uh, certainly echo the comments that people missed a good evening. The weather was outstanding, so I think it was a good. I think it was a good event, and I hope that we continue to do these in the future. And with that, I will now turn to the town administrator for his report. Just uh, before Joe goes, um, I just wanted to mention one thing in addition. And this was um, two things from the Johns Island Task Force meeting. One is that, bear with me a second, I'm looking at the agenda. The public meeting for the parcel of land where the new Harris Teeter is, the, I don't know what they call it, Andel. Andel West. Andel West is coming up in January, January 12th at five o'clock, the County Council's Planning and Public Works Committee will be looking at the Andel West development. So anybody who feels a need to participate in that, uh, please uh, make note of that date. And I think those were the, that was the only one that was really from there that's, uh, that's it. Thank you, sorry. To... Okay, Dan, yeah, thank you. Joe, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple uh, quick updates. Uh, the first one is, um, as you recall, we had um, entered into a contract with MyGov for the new uh, licensing, permitting, and code enforcement um, software system. Um, so our staff has been hard at work trying to get everything over to MyGov so they can move forward and um, build that system. So I did want to 
um, thank uh, all the members of our team for uh, a lot of hard work and effort that they put into uh, getting that project off the ground, especially uh, Catherine and uh, Tyler, who took on the lion's share of the work, uh, but also uh, Linda and Nicole as well. Um, over the next few weeks, they're going to be going ahead and building um, and customizing that software to meet our needs and our process and workflow. Uh, and we do expect to have a, um, some initial training in January uh, on that new system. Uh, again, uh, I've said it in the past, but we're shooting to go fully live when we move into our 2023 um, license and, and permit renewals, uh, which will probably start around, um, uh, I would say, the end of March, early April. Um, so we'll have a few months of training, testing, and all those things uh, over the next couple of months. But um, uh, as of right now, we are uh, on schedule um, for that implementation. Um, a question was raised at our workshop last week about can we get the trash cans on the beach? Uh, I have had a chance back on the beach. Um, I have had a chance to speak with um, Robert uh, Meyer, our buildings and grounds manager, uh, and he's assured me that he would be able to get out and serve them at least once, possibly twice a week, which I think during this time of year uh, would be sufficient. Um, just for anyone who doesn't know, we typically will put those out in April and then take them down at the end of September because that's when we have our uh, beach patrol uh, contract in place and they service those. So um, we do intend to get those back up um, after the first of the year uh, and we'll um, service those uh, during the off season as well. Um, one last item, uh, just a reminder, I will be out of the country leaving um, Thursday and I'll be gone for a little over two weeks, come back um, New Year's Day. Um, if you have anything time sensitive, I would just ask you to direct that to uh, Catherine while I'm gone. Um, I will intermittently be looking at emails, um, but keep in mind, I will be 16 to 18 hours ahead. So if you do email me, it might be the middle of the night. So I may not respond. Um, right away, but I, I will keep an eye on them uh, out of town as well. But um, if you have anything urgent, I would just ask, please um, contact uh, Catherine during my absence. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Any questions for Joe? Where are you going, Joe? You're going out of the country. Yes, we're going to, it's, uh, it's our honeymoon. We're going to um, Australia and New Zealand. Well, I hope you have a good trip, Joe. Well, thank you. It'll be summer there, so it'll be nice. Well, dress appropriately. I intend to. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next up, we will have the report of the town clerk stroke treasurer for the financials for the month of November. Catherine. Thank you, sir. Um, the total fund balance ending on November 30th, 2022 was $8,170,309, an amount about $1,299,971 more than the balance as of November 30th, 2021. Unrestricted revenue for November totaled $100,213, and unrestricted revenue for the year totaled $1,735,000. In $92, representing about 113% of the 2022 annual budget and being about $325,943 more than for the same period in 2021. Expenditures for November totaled $82,038 and expenditures for the year totaled $1,070,314 ,070, $1 which is 72.1% of the 2022 annual budget. Expenditures for the year were about $198,121, more compared to the same period of 2021. Excess revenues over expenditures was $18,175 for November, and excess revenues over expenditures was um, $664,778 for the year compared to an excess of revenues over expenditures of about $536,936 as of November 30th, 2021, reflecting an increase in revenues um, for this period as compared to last year's. 
Um, I do have one other item that's not on the agenda. Uh, it's about our upcoming jury trials. We will actually have two jury trials scheduled on January 26th. One of them will be at 9.30 a.m. and one of them will be at 1 o'clock p.m. I will be sending out 24 letters to those lucky residents to be part of our jury pool. Um, we got the jury pool, just as a reminder, we got the jury pool from the State Ethics Commission and it's based off of voters registration. Um, and I'm just cross-referencing to make sure that they are still the current owners, otherwise I'm picking another uh, resident to be on it. And um, so just be on the lookout for those letters. It will be sent to the physical address on Seabrook Island. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Catherine. Any questions for Catherine? Ben, did you have a question for Catherine on the financials? She took care of it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, there's no report from the town attorney. Uh, next up, report of the zoning administrator, stroke chief code enforcement officer. I'll call on Tyler to give his report. Thank you, Mayor Craig. Um, all that I have today is the code enforcement summary from our uh, last regular town council meeting on uh, November 15th through December 12th. Uh, in that time span, we have uh, 28 instances where a stop work order was issued for uh, individuals working without a required town business license, 15-ish uh, uh, instances of uh, stop work orders being issued uh, for individuals working without a town zoning permit. We had uh, eight occurrences where a vehicle was determined to be parked in a um, uh, in the grass or landscape area of a uh, short-term rental property. Uh, in each of those occurrences, the 24-hour contact um, was contacted, and the issue was resolved in a timely manner. Um, we had a total of 111 vehicle decal warnings that were issued. Um, I will reiterate again, though, that those decal warnings oftentimes are not necessarily for businesses that are operating without a business license. Those are businesses that have business licenses, but just do not have decals for every vehicle in their fleet. Um, and that's resolved just by them coming in and paying for the $1 decals, however many they need. Um, for their fleet. We also had uh, two violations on the beach, um, one of which was a uh, dog that was um, being washed or walked by its owners uh, off the leash in an unpermitted area. A verbal warning was issued and the dog was placed on the leash at that time. And another occurrence of an individual driving what was believed to be an unpermitted e-bike on the beach. That concludes my. Any questions for Tyler? Anyone? Anyone? No? Really? Only one dog off leash? Yeah. Only one. Oh, there's so many people. <laughs> I don't understand. But anyway, usually we do a lot more than one, right? Well, this is the, the stretch of time where you've actually got a little leeway to have a dog off a, off a leash, you know, off peak. Season, you got a healthy stretch of beach there where you can. Th this this occurrence happened to be over near Camp Saint Christopher, where uh, uh, where they're restricted from having them off the leash. Very good. All right, thank you. And uh, now we're on to uh, petitions. One uh, ordinances for second reading. Ordinance for first reading. Uh, Sir, yes. if you don't mind, we do have an ordinance for ordinance second reading. For second reading. <laughs> yes, of course. How did that slip my back in? I don't know. But we do have an ordinance for second reading. And uh, what we have is the ordinance 2022-07, an ordinance to adopt the budget for the town of Seabrook Island, South Carolina, 
for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023. Joe, do you have anything you'd like to add concerning um, this ordinance for second reading? Sure, no changes from um, first reading, just a quick recap, total um, budget for next year, uh, including the use of some reserves for capital projects, 2,766,942. Um, that's spread over several funds, including our general fund. Um, we have multiple restricted funds, which include the state A tax, accommodations tax, town, the new town accommodations tax, the county accommodations tax, the alcohol tax fund, um, the ARPA, the, the Recovery Act fund, the court fund, which we've moved out for budgetary purposes from the general fund the new short-term rental permit fund, uh, which will be made up of revenues from the uh, short-term rental um, permits. Uh, and then we have uh, five designated funds, the new conservation fund, the emergency fund, the road and drainage fund, the town facility fund, and the vehicle and equipment uh, replacement fund. Uh, everything else is pretty much our standard annual um, budget ordinance language. Um, unless there's any questions, I don't have anything additional to add. Any questions for Joe concerning ordinance 2022-07? Hearing none, may I have a motion for approval of ordinance 2022-07 at second reading? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion concerning ordinance 2022-07? adoption of the town budget for fiscal year 2023. Hearing none, all in favor of approval of ordinance 2022-07, please signify your approval by saying aye. Aye. 2022-07 aye. Aye. is approved. Very good. Now we'll just move right along to the ordinance for first reading, I think. Oh, an ordinance to grant to Berkeley Electric Cooperative Inc. the non-exclusive right, power, and authority to erect and to install and maintain and operate in, over, under, and upon the streets, alleys, and public places of the town of Seabrook Island. It's electric lines, poles, wires, guys, push braces, and apartment electric distribution facilities, whether used to render service to the town or not together with any necessary right of access thereto for such period as the same are rendered are needed by the cooperative to render electric service to its customers in the town of Seabrook Island, South Carolina. Also to set the amount of the franchise fee to be paid by Berkeley Electric Cooperative Inc. to the town of Seabrook Island, South Carolina. Joe, do you have any comments concerning ordinance 2022-08? Sure. Um, this was an item that we had um, discussed a little while back, and um, particularly as it relates to the franchise fee that the franchise fee um, that we collect from um, Berkeley Electric um, under our existing franchise agreement, it's set at three percent. But the agreement allows it to go up to five percent. Um, so when we last discussed it, council had asked us to um, reach out and. Uh, initiate the discussion with um, with Berkeley. Um, since that time, um, as as a result of those conversations, Berkeley had asked um, if we could actually go in and just update and adopt a new franchise agreement. And the primary purpose for that is um, uh, a little while back, the State Public Service Commission. Um, had uh, adopted, uh, basically got all the public utility providers together and they kind of mutually agreed to service areas. Um, you know, the last thing a utility wants to do is install a bunch of infrastructure just to have another utility to come in and install it right next to it. It's kind of wasteful. Um, so uh, in our area, the two utilities, of course, are Berkeley Electric which is the only one right now that's serving inside of our town limits. Uh, and then also uh, Dominion uh, Energy also serves some of the areas in our um, periphery. 
Um, the Public Service Commission has approved those um, um, service area maps, but the Public Service Commission's jurisdiction does not extend to municipalities. So what Berkeley has been doing and, and from my conversations with um, Bert Walling is, is, you know, as they're bringing these up with uh, municipalities around their service area, uh, they've been asking them to update their franchise agreements basically to locally adopt what's been adopted at the state level. So we would have a, an updated agreement with Berkeley. Um, and in here it says, you know, this is the service boundary map. Um, we uh, understand from our conversations with them, they would like us to also have one with Dominion, even though Dominion does not currently serve in the town limits. So we have uh, initiated that outreach and, and um, would like to start that process with them. Uh, but in the interim, we can move forward with, um, with uh, the draft uh, franchise agreement. Um, it's pretty much a boilerplate. Um, franchise agreement, not really significant changes for what we've had for um, decades with Berkeley. Um, they sent us over a draft. We did just recommend um, a couple minor revisions, which they uh, agreed to. Um, one of them, uh, it was in a section about reselling electricity. Um, so we did uh, recommend inserting some language that they agreed to that uh, should we install electric charging stations, then we would have the ability if you know we had a credit card swipe or something on there um, to sell that um, for uh, uh, the electricity for those charging stations if we choose to do so. Uh, it's not saying we will or we won't, but if we choose to do it, we have that written into the agreement that we can do that. And then um, the other component is on the franchise um, fee. Um, Berkeley right now is collecting a 3% uh, franchise fee that they remit to the town in lieu of obtaining a business license. Um, we have the ability to go up to 5%. Um, so what this agreement would do, uh, because they, when they make the payment, they pay based on what was collected the prior year. So uh, we'll adopt this. The draft agreement says that the franchise fee would be 5%. So they would start collecting 5% in January we wouldn't receive the revenue based on 5% until 2024 when they make the franchise payment for what they collect in 2023. So the check that we'll get in 2023 will be based on the 3%, which is what they collected um, during uh, calendar year 2022. And that's included in, um, in section 16 uh, of that draft agreement. So uh, I reviewed it. Um, I'm comfortable with it. We did send it to our uh, town attorney. He reviewed it and didn't come across any uh, issues or concerns. Mayor, I believe you were attached on those emails as well. So I'm not sure if you had anything uh, additional to add, but um, uh, at this point, we're comfortable bringing this forward for, uh, uh, for first reading. Uh, we would have to bring it back obviously for uh, second reading and a um, public hearing as well. All right, thank you, Jim. Any questions for Joe concerning Ordinance 2022-08? Just, um, just, just one thing, uh, given all the comments recently about issues with Berkeley, the response is basically they're the only game in town. Is that correct? In other words, if we said, you're not offering a sound product or whatever, you know, your quality of service is not up to our standard, whatever that is. We couldn't go to Dominion and have them be our provider at this point. Dominion could come in tomorrow and say, we want to run a bunch of electric lines and serve the town of Seabrook Island. Um, this is a non-exclusive um, agreement. So if you accept this and you approve the map that Dominion and Berkeley have both agreed to, even though technically it is non-exclusive, by adopting that map with both companies, Dominion would be saying, you know, we just recognize it's not worth our time, money, and effort to go into this area um, because they're not going to get a return off of it. Uh, and that would be something that they would both agree to with the town in separate franchise agreements. But technically, it is non-exclusive. Okay. 
Yeah, because usually wires and poles and things like that are public utility are shareable between companies. You only they only provide you with the current that goes through it. So in other words, Berkeley doesn't own what's in the ground. That's sort of like a public utility. Public Ber owns that. Berkeley owns the infrastructure, the locations where they install it. Um, is either public, which is why we have the franchise agreement, or, you know, in the case like behind the gate, it would be private, in which case they probably have easements or I don't know how they structure that behind the gate, but it is their line, their infrastructure, they own it. But not the rights of way. I mean, that's... No, I understand. If they have something coming down the Seabrook Island Road right of way, of course, it's all buried out here, but um, what this agreement is saying, they have the ability to run their lines in our right of way, the public right of way to serve their customers within our town limits. Joe, I had a question on section, excuse me, section 8 about um, street lights. Is, is that just referencing outside the gate or? And maybe this is a jurisdictional question again. Are the street lights behind the gate yes. part of this? Mm -hmm. I mean, how would we work with Sapoa if we said we want another street light or we one's not being maintained properly? Well, we have street lights in the public, so we have lights here at town hall uh -huh. primarily. I think I think those might be our only street lights. Um, but these are intended more so for uh, within the public right of way. So typically, if you had something within a private right of way, um, that's a private arrangement between the provider. And typically what they'll do is they'll install the pole and then whoever owns it is responsible for paying a monthly okay, fee. So for it. this reference here is not to any streetlights behind the gate. Well, if, I could, if you look at every pole, there is a Berkeley identification number. Well, I'm assuming that, but who okay. determines so, what it looks like and where it is? Okay. Um, That's so in other words, if it goes out, you do call Berkeley, give them that number, they come out and repair it. When we were looking at that five years ago, to replace Sapolo was looking at, in other words, instead of broadcasting out to go down, that was a cost to Sapoa, they will provide the basic light. There is like a basic light that they provide in their contract. For and I, I appreciate that, but that my question is behind the gate, is it Sapoa that determines where street lights are and their design? And that's not part of the section in here. We're not doing that. I mean, what this agreement is giving them the ability to serve within the town where and what that looks like <clears throat> if it's not within the public right of way or on public property will be between Berkeley and the property owner. In that case, probably so, the PO. On the private streets, that would be surprised. Mm -hmm. Okay, that answers my question. Yeah, but our, our franchise covers, gives them the ability to go across public right of way with mm -hmm. their infrastructure um, and then also to serve within our town limits. Um, so like where I came from, you know, pretty much all of the neighborhoods were on public rights of way. So the town would actually pay for the street lights in the mm -hmm. public rights of way or contribute towards them depending on how they were set up. Um, but if it was in a private gated community or something, then those were private and the town wouldn't pay for that. Yeah. All right, thanks John. Do you have a question? Well, I'm just not, I don't quite understand why we have to have another agreement with Dominion. I think uh, they're not providing anything. It doesn't say you're not providing anything. That, that was the same comment I made. Um, <laughs> and, but ultimately it's, it's basically for the sole purpose of them mutually accepting the service area map. Okay. Okay. And I'm sure that will come up in front of the council next. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hopefully at your next meeting. Can't promise that because they're going to be the ones providing it. But, okay. um, we, we'd like to get them both nailed down, assuming we have to do both. Then we'd like to get them both 
nailed down. Any further questions concerning ordinance 2022-08? I have a motion for approval of ordinance 2022-08 at first reading. Second. Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion concerning ordinance 2022-08? Hearing no further questions, comments, or discussion. All in favor of approval of ordinance 2022-08 at first reading, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 2022-08 is approved unanimously at first reading. Uh, next up, other action items, appointments to town boards, commissions, and committees and commissions. First of these, uh, Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee, there are seven upcoming openings as of the end of the year. And uh, at this time, I am calling for nominations for the Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee upcoming openings. Anyone? Have, an, have nominations. Anyone? Anyone? I have a nomination. I nominate for appointment all of the current members of the ATAX Advisory Committee for full two year terms, namely Randall Buck, Joanne Fagan, Joseph Bontuti, Anne Maria Rourke, Lyle Chilich, Stuart Spisak, and Susan Leggett. And with that, any questions, comment, or discussion concerning those nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the nominations of Randall Buck, Joanne Fagan, Joseph Fontuti. Uh, excuse me, sir, did we get a second to your nomination? Oh, do we have a second? Second. Sorry. <laughs> any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the nomination of Randall Buck, Joanne Fagan, Joseph Pontuti, Anne Maria Rourke, Ronald Chillich, Stuart Spisak, and Susan Leggett to the Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee. Please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 All are appointed. Next up, Board of Zoning Appeals. We have one upcoming opening, and I again ask for nominations. Any nominations? None. I nominate Elizabeth Palmer for a full five years term to the Board of Zoning Appeals. May I have a second for that nomination? Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion concerning the nomination of Elizabeth Palmer to the Board of Zoning Appeals? Hearing none. All in favor of appointment of Elizabeth Palmer to the Board of Zoning Appeals, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Elizabeth Palmer is appointed to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Last is the Planning Commission, three upcoming openings on the Planning Commission. Again, I call for nominations to fill those three upcoming openings. Anyone? Anyone? No? In that case, I nominate existing members Stan Ulner and James Newton, along with Tom Hung, for full two year terms to the upcoming openings on the Planning Commission. May I have a second for those nominations? Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion of the nomination of Stan Ulner, James Newton, and Tom Hung to the Planning Commission? Hearing none. All in favor of appointment of Stan Owner, Joanne, James Newton, and Tom Hund for full two year terms of the Planning Commission, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 They are appointed. Next up, resolution 2022 40. A resolution authorizing the temporary discharge of firearms by the Seabrook Island Property Owners Association within the town of Seabrook Island for the purpose of thinning the deer herd. Uh, we've done this a number of times. Joe, do you have any particular comments you would like to make concerning this resolution? Um, the draft resolution is included 
Uh, in your packet, um, the POA is requesting uh, approval um, for an exception um, in our code section 18-23B uh, prohibits the discharge of firearms within the town. Uh, however, in 1823C, there is an exception that the town council by resolution may grant an exception to that prohibition for the purpose of thinning the deer herd as part of a wildlife management program. Um, the POA is seeking to use a skilled marksman um, through um, bait stands to um, remove up to 50 deer uh, between the dates of December 15th of this year and February 15th of next year. And um, basically, if you approve this, they would have the uh, ability to do that um, basically over the next 60 or so days. Uh, and they would be um, during the, uh, the hours of darkness, so 5 p.m. to 5 uh, a.m. Uh, has been the, the standard that's been adopted for uh, at least as long as I've been here and probably uh, before that as well. So um, that is the uh, request that they've made. Kevin, is there anyone on from Zapolo? No, sir. Okay. In that case, uh, any questions concerning resolution 2022-40? I, I just have a comment for the record so that we're not bombarded that the town is deciding to call for you here that SAPOA has a long, well-established procedure of surveying the deer herds uh, using wildlife experts to decide how many need to call to keep them healthy. Um, I know it breaks everybody's heart to think of Bambi um, being shot, but they're trying to keep the herd healthy. We're not approving any of that. That's all part of SAPOA's study and survey and decision. All we're saying is, they can carry out the plan by discharge of the matter. Thank you, Councilwoman Tinky. At this time, I will call for a motion for approval of resolution 2022-40. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments, or, dis or further discussion concerning resolution 2022-40? Hearing now all in favor of approval of resolution 2022-40, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Uh, resolution 2022-40 is unanimously approved. Next up, we have the 2023 town meeting schedule. Uh, this was uh, previewed by our town administrator at the uh, December work session. Uh, you have it in your pocket. I don't think there's any need for us to read the town meeting schedule. So at this time, I would be happy to entertain a motion for approval of the 2023 town meeting schedule as presented. So is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion concerning the 2023 town meeting schedule? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the 2023 town meeting schedule as presented, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 The schedule is approved unanimously. Uh, next, we have the 2023 town holiday schedule. Again, uh, this was previewed at our work session. I'm not going to read the town holiday schedule. Uh, you have it in your packets. Uh, may I have a motion for approval of the 2023 town holiday schedule as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please signify your approval of the proposed 2023 town holiday schedule as presented. Please signify by saying aye. 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 And the town meeting schedule is approved as presented. So, next up, items for information or discussion. We have none. And finally, uh, do we have any citizens' comments? No, sir. 
No one wishing to make any citizens comments. Very well. There being no indication of anyone participating in this meeting that wishes to make a citizen's comment. At this time, I will close the period for the second period for citizens' comments, and we will now invite members of council to make comments. Councilwoman Thinky, any comments? No, just happy holidays to everybody. We will see you on January and may Joe have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Councilwoman Fox. Any comments? Um, I reiterate exactly what Councilwoman Finky said. And only because I want to also include it in my TASI clips, I would like to um, commend the presentation by NUSC at our meeting um, a week ago that I unfortunately was not here for or well enough to do TASI clips. <laughs> so I want to include that presentation. In, at the end of this uh, meeting, and so I would like to just mention that they did a nice job. <clears throat> and that's the end of my comments. Very good. Council, Councilman Court Velasi, any comments? No, I'm just echoing everybody's good wishes for a safe and happy holiday. Thank you. Councilman Goldstein, any comments? No. Any comments? Well, I will happily wish everyone. An excellent holiday, and uh, thank you all for your service to the town. And with that, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the December council meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of adjournment, please signify your approval to adjourn by saying aye. 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 And at 3.46 and a half, the meeting is